so I finally found the time to watch an anime that I have put off for years, Shigarui, also known as Death Frenzy which I will admit is a great name for either a metal band or a punk band drummer. So Shigarui is the adaptation of the action psychological thriller manga written by Takayuki Yamaguchi. The basic premise is this. The story is set in Edo period Japan during the reign of Tokugawa Tadanage, the daimyo to the shogun Tokugawa Hidetada, his father. If you don't know what any of those weeb words mean, essentially Tokugawa was a high-ranking noble who is the son of the shogun. So basically a prince if you want to put it in simple terms. And and to put it bluntly, the bitch was nuttier than squirrel shit. He was pretty infamous for his long string of violence and abuses of power, to the point that the shogun that came after his father, his older brother Tokugawa Iemitsu, stripped him of his political power and forced him to commit suicide. You know the seppuku thing? Yeah, he made him do that. Shigarui takes place right before the fall of Tadanage, and the anime itself focuses on a specific slice of the story that doesn't really have anything to do with the nobility politics. Pretty much any description you read about this anime's plot isn't exactly honest. They always describe the main selling point of the manga, which is that Tatanage demands a sword fighting tournament where competitors use actual swords instead of the wooden practice ones that were the tradition. And the reason he wanted this to happen is because disembowelment is cool, I guess. But, and I really have to emphasize this if you're already pulling up the first episode and excited to watch samurai dudes chop each other into pieces, the anime isn't about that. The anime is actually about the backstory to the two main characters and how they got to the tournament in the first place. Yeah, it Berserk 97's you, where you get a single episode to tease events to come, then explain all the events that lead up to that point in the first place. So if you're angry that this isn't a hyper-violent tournament anime, like a mix between Blood Sea and Dragon Ball Super, then I'm sorry. But it's still a really good show, so please keep watching and see why I fell in love with this series. Instead of revolving around the tournament, the focus is on a group of samurai under the Kogan School, run by the mentally unstable and downright sociopathic Kogan Iwamoto. And the two students that get the most attention and are honestly the emotional cores of the story are Genosuke Fujiki, a lifelong student of the school that is 100% loyal to Kogan and his teachings, and Saigon Iriko, a newcomer that dreams of gaining fortune and status. Now, looking at Shigurui from the outside, you think you can guess what the plot will be. It seems like a brainless bloodfest that doesn't really have any thought put into the story. Yeah, I actually felt this way for years. Then, I sat down and watched the show. Shigurui is a completely different beast from something like Corpse Party or Genocyber. This series is incredible, unironically, and has become an all-time favorite. There is a lot of complexity behind the characters and the plotline, and the anime only pushes this further. I'm actually going to be vague on details since it's best to go into this without knowing how everything plays out. All I can really say is that Shigurui is a very harsh deconstruction and criticism on the idea of the samurai. The characters in this story are very interesting, but they are not morally in the right. Not even in the slightest. Dorohidoro was an anime where it was hard to find a real villain. Shigurui is an anime where it's hard to find any sort of good guy. Everyone is extremely flawed and can be very difficult to like when certain things happen. The idea of the wise and noble samurai simply doesn't exist in Shigurui. The world it sets up is not Samurai Jack. It's violent, brutal, and the ones that live in it are just trying not to die. The protagonists are nowhere near an exception. They are just as capable of doing terrible things as anyone else with desperation and power, and it's not even a case of ends justify the means. The Kogan School are arrogant, cult-like in their devotion to their master, and resort to violence at even the slightest form of rebellion. They're simply bad people. Characters like Iku and Mie exist to show the consequences of their actions, as they're two normal women stuck with this group of melodramatic lunatics that don't even treat them like human beings. Once again, the setup will definitely strike you as familiar Familiar, and you're probably pretty sure that you know exactly how the dynamic between Iriko and Fujiki will go down. The loyal student versus the ambitious newcomer that thinks about himself. But the setup with Iriko and Fujiki is actually one of the most legitimate cases of subverted expectations that I have seen. I'm not gonna spoil it, but Iriko's arc is very satisfying to watch, and he's about the only one you actually want to see win in the end. Because ironically, the fact that he does think for himself shows why Iriko is one of the few good people in this anime. 
Okay, he's not really a good person. He's just the absolute lesser of a shitload of evils. You see, Shigeru's main theme is taking on the idea of loyalty. As stated, the time period that the story takes place in was a very tumultuous time in Japanese history. There was this absolute lunatic that was in charge, and he was pretty much free to do whatever he wanted because nobody stood up to him, because the soldiers were loyal to him. They felt it was an honor to die for their master, who was a complete madman that tortured and killed innocent people for shits and giggles. It's clear in both the anime and the manga that the entire concept of loyalty that borders on devotion is a very big no-no to the author. The philosophy is pretty individualistic. Think for yourself instead of blindly following a psychopath, retards. That's not to say that loyalty in general is made fun of and criticized. No, it's still very aware of why it's a virtue. It simply comments on how loyalty can be taken too far and lead to really bad results. The students of Kogan follow his every word and fulfill every order he desires, even when it is clear that he is completely insane and causing untold amounts of suffering, including towards his own fucking daughter, but they refuse to question him. And because of that, they are dragged into increasingly dire circumstances, and the entire collapse of the school happens because of Kogan's actions. So yeah, the message of Shigurui is honestly pretty unique, at least for anime. If you blindly go along with a tyrant because he's in charge, you'll suffer the same consequences when the inevitable happens. And once again, I walked into this fully thinking this was just a drunk fun party anime. But now that I got that incredibly homosexual story analysis of Shigurui out of the way, what makes the anime so good? Well, what I really enjoyed about this anime was that they took a story that was already pretty fucking interesting and used it to create an extremely cerebral experience. So much of this anime relies on trusting the audience to simply digest what they see on the screen without needing a narrator to come in and explain what happens. So that's already a plus right there, personally. I love having a story force me to interpret shit instead of spoon-feeding answers. But on top of that, you have a very surreal interpretation of the story. It matches the manga practically page by page. It simply tells the story in a more indirect way that's a tad less grounded in reality. There are a lot of points that feel like this is the anime equivalent to Mandy than anything else where you have a character-driven story that isn't really fantastical or really crazy on paper, but the way it's told is almost like a fairy tale. In fact, a lot of Shigurui is almost designed to feel like a ghost story or a fucked up folk tale. The region the story takes place in feels intentionally empty or outright covered in fog. Even when there are crowds of people walking around or nobles joking around at a party, it doesn't feel like reality as we expected. It's unnatural and sort of creepy. Like all the characters are already dead, and this is their personal hell. It can be outright suffocating. But I have to admit, I really dig the tone of this anime. It's extremely grim and depressing, and boy howdy is it violent. But that's what makes this story so compelling, because there are points where characters get moments to sit down and enjoy themselves. Small little breaks in the story that humanize the cast, and you see who they truly are as people. That's how you separate a good grim story from a tryhard edgelord story. Let the world be nasty and merciless, but you need to have characters feel something other than misery sometimes. Granted, in all fairness, Shigurui doesn't have a lot of breaks, it keeps going, so hold on tight if you want to go through the show, but they still exist. And yeah, sometimes it is fun just to watch something incredibly nihilistic and grimdark. Anybody remember HBO Spawn? Anyway, another detail I loved about this anime is the sound design. The tension in this show would not be anywhere near as high without the godlike sound design that accentuates it. You have a very atmospheric soundtrack that doesn't try to overtake the scene you're watching. Edo period instruments mixed with an ambiance that feels really natural and fitting. It's not as bombastic as like a Final Fantasy soundtrack or something, but it matches this story perfectly. And another reason that the sound works so well is because of how it builds onto itself when a big event happens. Because everything is trying to be grounded in reality, I mean there are real cool moments but fuck it. The point is the violence isn't about frantic melees. The combat is, of course, samurai sword fighting.
fighting, so efficiency takes hold over spectacle. Most fights end after a single strike, because they involve a metal sword cutting into people meat, so the focus is on building up to that moment. If you've ever watched a spaghetti western, you know the duel trope, where two guys stare at each other and everything builds as you wait for one of them to pull out their gun. That's the same basic principle with the big fights in Shigurui. You definitely see jobbers get ripped apart, and they don't waste time when that happens, but when they want to make it clear that this fight is a big deal, you feel the whole scene build that tension, and it really works because you don't know how everyone got to the point where the tournament begins. The details are open for a lot of shit to happen. Granted, you know who's going to survive to the end of the show, but there's more ways to fuck up a character than just outright killing them off. And yeah, characters definitely get fucked up. People suffer in this anime, and they suffer bad, in more ways than one, too. There are full-on mental breakdowns, fates worse than death, dudes are crippled for life, the odd, horribly painful demise stacked on top of that. Like I said, this shit is dark, so if you want a more fun thing to watch in your free time, check out something else. I'm not even shit-talking anyone genuinely turned off by the subject matter, it's pretty heavy stuff, but if you like stories like this, then it's a definite borderline masterpiece. The only real problem I have with this anime is the ending. Well, more so the lack of one. Unfortunately, Shigurui's anime ending is one of the infamous read the manga cases, where it cuts off at such an abrupt point that you are certain there is more to come, which is sort of true, just not in regards to the anime, sadly. And if you think there's a possibility for a season 2, yeah, the anime came out in 2007, so I don't think Madhouse is interested in reviving a 13-year-old project. Would I love them to do that? Yes. Will it happen? Definitely not. Oh, and the animation. Probably should mention that since it's the most important part of any anime. Yeah, it's Madhouse, so it looks pretty fucking good. Characters look great, movements are clean and fluid, and the violence is grotesque as all hell. Even the CGI looks good, because the way it is used is really interesting. You see, characters' environments are all two-dimensional, but things like intestines and gore are CGI. And shockingly, this actually works. Once again, it helps cement the ethereal vibe this anime shoots for. It's uncanny just enough to unsettle you, but it isn't so objectively terrible that it completely takes you out of the experience. The people behind this anime knew exactly what they were doing every step of the way, and honestly, this show is downright phenomenal and I cannot recommend it highly enough. Don't touch the dub though. Not because it's bad, I mean, in all honesty, I plain haven't watched the dub. It's just that watching a samurai anime that takes place in Edo period Japan in English? Come on man, that's casual as fuck. Be a real gangsta. Watch the sub. But that's all I can say about Shigurui. I was completely blown away by how good this anime was, and was very happy to see my expectations completely shattered. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. Oh, and by the way, all of the episodes of this anime are up on YouTube, completely uncensored. Blood, guts, and titties for all to see. All on the official Funimation YouTube account. Gotta love how I have to dance around these things to review the fucking show, but Funimation gets to broadcast it without any consequences. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh... Fuck it. <laughs>